Now we're prepared to run the remainder of the combustion testing. Remember, we took care of our natural gas leak detection. Next, we have spillage, which we can use our toy smoke uh, machine, which is the only non-toxic one on the market, or a mirror to test for moisture. We've got our draft test wired up on channel B of our manometer. We've got our worst case depressurization test for the CAS wired up on channel A. And we've got our combustion analyzer here. Now, what we have in this CAS is two appliances that are commonly vented into the chimney. If they were separately vented, then the furnace combusting would only have a negative effect on the water heater's ability to draft its combustion gases properly because it will be taking air from the CAS, using it for combustion, and then sending it outside, which increases the depressurization. If that were the case, we would turn both of these on at the same time to start them both combusting because that, at that point, would be the worst case for the water heater. Since, however, they're commonly vented, what we're going to do is first kick the water heater on by itself with all the rest of the house at the uh, baddest case we can get to with just the exhaust fans before we get to true worst case and kick the furnace on. So we're going to test for spillage and draft without its big brother, and then we'll test it again with the furnace combusting as well to see if that helps or hurts. So I'm ready to go. I'm going to kick my water heater on and it fires up. I have 60 seconds at this point to test for spillage. And I'm running a 360 degree pattern around the draft diverter of the water heater to make sure that the smoke is going into the flue and not coming back out of it. And we're at 15 seconds and we've just passed spillage. It's already drafting very well. Now we need to take our draft, which at this point is negative 2.9. Based on the temperature outside, it's 40 degrees outside, I would use my BPI standardized uh, draft limit calculation, which is 40 degrees divided by 40, which is 1 minus negative 2, or minus 2.75, which would give us a draft limit of negative 1.75. We exceed that right now. So now I've passed this without the furnace running. Now I need to kick the furnace on to see if it still passes. All right, the draft inducer is kicked on. In another 30 seconds or so, the burners will fire up, and after that, the blower will kick back on, at which point I'm gonna retest for spillage and draft on the water heater. And now our furnace is fired. We're ready to test for true worst case again on the water heater and see whether the furnace is helping or hurting. And it's still passing spillage which is good news. The next test we need to run is the spillage and draft on the next biggest appliance. Now this is an induced draft furnace, which means that there is no possibility for spillage, so we don't need to run that test on this unit. However, the draft we are gonna test, and we can see that exactly one minute after the furnace started running, we're at a negative 8.7, which is fantastic. Okay, now we're gonna wait for this guy to get up to steady state in order to record the carbon monoxide level inside the combustion gas. We'll know we have reached steady state when the temperature in these gases has stopped rising. So we move our combustion analyzer over to temperature mode and we can see that it's still going up. So I'm gonna wait on that for a couple minutes. And while we're waiting, we are at true worst case right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my worst case depressurization, which is on channel A is at negative 4.7. Since we know our baseline was negative 3.5, we'll subtract 3.5 from 4.7 and we get a worst case adjusted of negative 1.2. So the effect of all of this exhaust on the house at worst case is negative 1.2. And we compare that with our CAS depressurization limits from BPI. Now, since we're waiting for this to get to steady state, I'm gonna kick back over to our temperature and I'm waiting for this to even out. Once we reach steady state, the temperature will stop rising. Uh, if I have to wait for 10 minutes and the temperature is still rising, then I just call it at 10 minutes and I record whatever the carbon monoxide content in the flue gases is at that point. Right now it looks like we've got 416 degrees Fahrenheit and we've got around 30 parts per million. That exceeds our 
uh, BPI standard of 26 parts per million as the beginning of an action level. So now we know we're going to need to take action and recommend something to the homeowner. Since I have this on the water heater, I'm going to transfer over to the furnace, and I'm waiting for this to reach steady state. Again, I switch back over to my temperature. If we had a spillage failure on either one of these appliances, we would need to take our CAS out of worst case and test again at natural state. However, since they both pass at worst case, we know that they're strong enough to handle it at natural conditions, so we don't have to retest. Now we've reached steady state on the furnace, and it is approximately 247 degrees. Our carbon monoxide content is 14 parts per million, and that passes BPI muster. Uh, it's under the 25 parts per million, so there is no action level needed to take on this furnace. Now, we've completed our five tests, natural gas leak detection, spillage, draft, carbon monoxide content in the flue gases, and CAS worst case depressurization. I'm ready to turn these guys off. And before I leave my CAS, I need to remember to get all my equipment and patch all my holes with aluminum tape. Now that they're piloted, we're ready for the blower door test, which is the next video in this series. Thank you very much for watching.